Hi, in this video I'll give you step-by-step -step instructions on how to set up port forwarding on your router so that you can access OpenSprinkler remotely when you are not at home. For demonstration I'll be using two representative routers, a TP-Link router and an Apple Airport Extreme. The features to be covered in this video are pretty universal and available on most modern routers. If you have any questions, you can refer to your router's user manual for detailed instructions. To begin, let's take a look at the principles behind port forwarding. Imagine this is your home network. You have computers, smartphones, iPads, and open sprinkler connected to the router, either through a wired or wireless connection. The router then goes through a modem to reach the internet. So the devices and the router are part of your home network or local network and everything else is part of the public network or the internet. Now each device on your local network has a unique IP address. This is typically assigned automatically by the router using a service called the DHCP. The router itself also has an IP address. In fact, it has two. One is an internal IP which looks very similar to the device IPs. And the other is an external IP which looks completely different from the internal IP. So the router behaves like a gateway or portal which is accessible both internally and externally. If this sounds complicated, uh, just imagine a telephone system of a company. The router is the central hub which is assigned a unique 1-800 number. This is just like the external IP. And think of each device as a customer representative's office phone. So each is given a different extension number, which is similar to the internal IP. You cannot directly reach the customer representative from the outside, but you can dial the 1-800 number and tell it which extension number you want to reach. The router maintains uh, records that map each extension number to the physical connection of the phone. So it will give you the connection. And of course, if uh, an extension number is not on record, the call will be denied. This is basically how network communications work too. Specifically, you can associate a port number, in this case port 80, to the external IP. When the router sees a request from the outside, it checks its own records to see if there's any device associated with this port number. If so, it will forward the request to the device. Otherwise, this request will be denied. So this is the basic principles of the port forwarding. And more specifically, the router maintains a port forwarding table which is configured by you. For each entry here, you define the external port as well as the internal IP and port number. And the internal IP and port have to match the OpenSprinkler's IP and port number. On OpenSprinkler, you can click button B1 uh, to find out the, uh, its IP address and the port number. Now, the external port can be any number between 0 to 65535 and it actually has nothing to do with the internal port number unless if your router forces you to use the same number for both. So in this example I'm using port 8080 as the external port number and note that you cannot define the external IP because the external IP is given to you by your internet service provi provider and cannot be customized. Now, once this entry is uh, configured, when you send a request from the outside using the external IP followed by colon 80A0, the router will check its uh, um, port forwarding table and find where to map this request to and then forward this request to your open sprinkler. Now, if you have multiple open sprinklers, uh, on the same network, you can define one entry for each open sprinkler. Um, just make sure each one has a different external port number. 
So in this example, I have a second open sprinkler at internal IP 192.168.1.56. I set up a second port forwarding entry and gave it the external port 8081. So you can choose any number for this as long as it's unique from the other external ports. Now when I'm outside and I request to access external IP followed by colon A081, the router will then check the uh, table and then find the record and then uh, forward this request to the uh, correct open sprinkler. So that's it. So in the following, I'm going to use the two representative routers to show you how to first set a static IP address for OpenSprinkler so that the internal IP of OpenSprinkler is fixed and does not change dynamically. Second, create a port forwarding record on the router. And finally, using dynamic DNS service to manage the external IP. Okay, so first let's go through the steps of setting up static IP address for OpenSprinkler. The reason we want to do this is, as I've shown previously, the port forwarding record uh, requires the uh, knowing the OpenSprinkler's IP address. And because this is uh, assigned dynamically to OpenSprinkler, uh, we want to make sure that um, it is a fixed IP and doesn't change over time. So I'm going to first show how to do this on the uh, TP-Link router. And uh, so first of all, uh, get on to the router's uh, administration page. And then um, if you go to the DHCP uh, m menu from the left, and then you can go to uh, uh, address reservation. So. And here you can uh, add a, a new entry. And so to do this, you will need to know the uh, OpenSprinkler's MAC address. Assuming you have a fairly recent version of the OpenSprinkler firmware, you can uh, click button B2, and then it should display the uh, MAC address to the LCD screen. And then you can just uh, put down the MAC address here. Uh, and then uh, also write down the IP address um, you want to reserve. Um, so, you know, make sure that this is IP address which is compatible with your network settings. Um, and then the status has to be enabled and then so I can do save. And then notice that it says this function won't take effect until the device reboots. So at this point, uh, what you should do is you should restart your router and then also once the router uh, restarts then uh, also restart your open sprinkler so that way the open sprinkler should have uh, this reserved IP address assigned to it and also this IP address will remain fixed. Next let's come back to the router's configuration page and then look at how to set up a port forward uh, port forwarding record. So first of all go to the forwarding page and then uh, make sure you're on the virtual servers page. So click on add new uh, and then so if you look at here um, so basically um, these are the parameters that I described previously. So there is a service port which is also called the external port so we can put you know a0 a0 this can really be any number of your choice uh, as long as it's unique for each uh, uh, record the internal port uh, and uh, IP address has to match that on open sprinkler and if you don't remember what the IP address is you can uh, go to uh, the open sprinkler device and click the first button B1 and that will show the IP address and port number to the LCD screen. So this, uh, if you've set up the DHCP reservation correctly, it should be exactly the reserved IP and then the port is by default 80 uh, unless if you've changed it on uh, Open Sprinkler. Um, and then, so the other options, you can just, you know, keep them as is, and then you can do save. 
Once this is set, you, you should restart your router for this uh, change to uh, take effect. So next, let's see how to achieve similar settings on uh, an airport uh, extreme router. And so unlike the other routers, the airport extreme uh, does not have a built-in web interface. But instead, um, you uh, should launch the airport utility, this program, um, on your uh, Mac computer. And then um, you can click on the device and go to edit. So here um, you will see um, the configuration uh, dialog. So go to the network tab. And this is where you can configure DHCP reservations and also the port forwarding uh, settings. Um, so for example, you can add a DHCP reservation record. So you can say open sprinkler. Um, reserve address by MAC address. Again, you know, you can put in your um, MAC address here. And then the uh, reserved address and then click on save. And then next, uh, you can also define uh, a port forward record um, first give it a name again you can call open sprinkler um, and then these two are the public port numbers so basically you can leave the UDP port uh, empty because we're not because open sprinkler does not use UDP it uses TCP um, and so here you know for TCP again I can give it a external port 8080 and then this is Open Sprinkler's IP address, which I've reserved this one for Open Sprinkler. And then um, the internal, or here it's called private TCP port, is Open Sprinkler's uh, I, uh, port number, uh, which is 80 by default. And so I can do save. Um, and then update. So this will restart the. Uh, uh, airport um, extreme and then once it's um, restarted um, then um, you should also restart your open sprinkler so that it can get the uh, reserved IP address um, um, and then you're all set. The last topic I want to cover is using dynamic DNS service to manage external IPs. Um, as we already know, the router has an external IP address, which uh, is uh, allocated by the Internet Service Provider. Although this IP uh, most of the time remains the same, um, you know, occasionally when you restart your uh, modem, uh, you might end up getting a different IP address. To find out this IP address, you can open a browser and Google, what's my IP, and then the result that you get is your external IP. Now, in order to avoid having to remember uh, this number, um, you can actually use a dynamic DNS service, which uh, is supported by uh, most modern routers as well. So for example, with the TP-Link router, there is a page called dynamic DNS. And when you come to this page, you see that uh, you have three options for the service provider. So basically what this does is you can apply for a, a dynamic DNS account on any of the three service providers here. And then uh, once you have the account, you can write down your username, password, and the do domain name that has been registered. Uh, and then um, you can, when you're outside uh, the network, you can access Open Sprinkler by using an easy to remember name such as race open sprinkler dot no IP dot com. Um, and so for details you have to look at the specific uh, instructions uh, for each uh, from each service provider. Okay, that's all. Hopefully this is helpful for you to understand how port forwarding works and help you uh, set up Open Sprinkler so that you can access it uh, remotely. Thank you for watching this video.